Hey everybody, Happy New Year's! I'm sorry I missed out on all the fun last night, but I hear that Scott did a really good job with the cooking video. I haven't watched it because I'm afraid I'm going to be too like OCD and managerial and director or whatever about it, but um, oh my god, I had the worst 24-hour stomach virus, and I haven't been sick in probably 11 years. Like maybe a day or two of sniffles, but like sick sick, like... Oh, no. And so I really have a lot of gratitude now for the fact that I have been so healthy and felt so good for so many years because that was terrible. Anyway, enough about my horrible, sad stomach virus suffering. Um, because I missed so much and I didn't get to do my Q&A with you guys, I'm here now. And we've extended the membership sale, so if you haven't taken advantage, you can still do that for a few more hours, especially when this video is done. So if you go over to GetMealPlans.com right now, you can get a yearly membership to the meal plans at 22% off. And I'm also throwing in my weight loss bundle, which is amazing. It's never been seen before. You can't get it anywhere else. And then after today, when the sale ends, it's gone forever. And you don't want to miss out on these tools. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about. And I know um, some of you know this story if you listen to my podcast, Shortcut to Slim, but I actually am one of those unfortunate people who gained weight on a plant-based vegan diet. Um, and not a little bit. I, I gained quite a lot. It didn't start out that way. When I first heard about a plant-based vegan diet, which I was really attracted to because I'd always had sort of different health issues. And um, I just, I the more I learned about it, I'm like, oh yeah, this the science here is so amazing. Like this makes sense. Like, yes, of course, vegetables. And so when I started it, um, the weight came off initially really beautifully. Like I lost 20 pounds. Like it just like flew right off and I wasn't even eating particularly perfect. Like there was a lot of Boca burgers and things like that in my early days of being vegan. Um, I read that skinny bitch book, I don't know, 12 years ago and I was like, yep, I'm in. And like I said, it worked great. I was sleeping better. My migraines went away. I'd had horrible acne my whole life. Had been to every dermatologist. Nobody could help me. That went away. Um, I had suffered horrible GI issues my whole life. Like I carried Tums in my purse. Like I just was so sick all the time. And all that went away. And my insomnia went away. And I was in law school. And I started doing better. Like my grades were better. And I was sleeping better. And I was performing. So I was like, yes, this works. And so it did. For a few years, it worked. But then I just couldn't seem to lose any more weight, which was a problem because I wasn't I still had more I needed to lose. My doctor was still like, you need to do a little bit more here, Lindsay. Um, and I was really uncomfortable. Like, you know, my stomach was hanging over my pants. I had a lot of, like, rashes under my armpits and on my legs. And I just was like, well, I don't know. Like, I'm eating I'm eating plant-based. Why isn't it working? Uh, and so I did what a lot of us do is I started, you know, listening to others, reading on the Internet. And everyone's like, well, it's because you're not perfect. And it was like, well, yeah, I mean, sure, I eat like an Oreo every now and then, but like that can't be why. Like, yeah, sometimes I have a cocktail, but really, could this be it? And so I tried to be perfect. I, at one point, it was crazy. I was basically only eating uh, whole, like vegetables whole. Like I wouldn't even eat pureed foods anymore. I wouldn't even eat like applesauce or anything that was processed because I was like, that must be my problem. And I just kept gaining weight. It was the craziest thing. Like the more perfect I tried to be, the more weight I was gaining. And I couldn't understand. And I also couldn't understand why this thing that had worked for like I lost 20 pounds, like why wasn't it working anymore? And then when I started to gain weight, I was like, this is this is really not good. And so I was like, I don't want to stop being vegan. Like I don't know what to do. Um, but then in like a span of a very short time, I want to say about, I don't know, two weeks, I gained seven pounds and I really freaked out at that point. I went to my doctor and I was like, is something wrong? Like, is it my hormones? Is it my thyroid? I don't know. And um, it wasn't until I kind of faced my doctor and started talking about the foods I was eating and seeing her, like she really tried so hard to have a beautiful bedside manner and not be shocked, but I could tell and I could hear myself when I talked about the amount of food I was eating to her. And yeah, it was all healthy food. It was carrots and bean burgers and all these vegetables, but it was a lot of them. Um, and I mean, we're talking like two and three plates of food. And I would pat myself on the back. I would eat these massive gorilla salads and like pat myself on the back for being so healthy. But 
plants don't have magic calories that don't count. Like they, they still count. It all counts. And I was an overeater and I slowly became that way because of all of these messages that are out there. Like, Oh, well you can eat as much as you want or you can, you don't have to count calories if it's a plant food or, um, you know, yo, you're not going to get fat eating cherries. And it's just like, it doesn't matter what you eat. If you overeat more than you need, you're going to gain weight. And that's what was happening to me. I was just eating so much. I, you know, it wasn't a, it wasn't surprising to have two bananas as a snack. Like I, and I thought I was healthy. I thought I was just so awesome and smart and great. Um, but that's what would happen to me. And so I was just really eating a lot. And so I had to have like a coming to Jesus moment that I'd become an overeater and I was just eating too much. And so I started to try to cut back on the food I was eating to like, you know, rein it back in. And then I found that I was hungry all the time. And part of that was because I was used to eating so much and now I have so little. And that's why dieting can suck so much is because you're like, where all my food go? So I figured that, okay, if I can only have this amount of, you know, calories or this amount of food in the day, I want to make sure it's one, stuff that's tasty, and two, that it's going to actually fill me up and make me feel satiated. And so that's when I started to learn about volumetrics or just sort of like calories in general and how like, you know, almonds, you can have like this many almonds, or you can have like this much cantaloupe, or you can have like this much potato, and that they all satiate different. And so I started paying attention to ingredients that were like really filling, like they were low calorie, but they were Filling, so I wouldn't feel hungry and like I wanted to chew my arm off. And that's sort of how the meal plans were born is I just started reading all of the science and like sort of looking around and seeing what foods were going to be the best for me. I wanted to have the best return on my investment. And um, so that's how I built them. And so I started that, I don't know, what, six years ago now. And I've just been studying for the last six years. And then in the last two years, I really dug deep into weight loss science, which is why I have my science podcast now. It's all research stuff. It's really fascinating, guys. You should listen to it. Um, especially if you want to understand like why it works or doesn't work. And just I've been like sort of tinkering and changing the meal plans based on what I've learned. And the, the happy news for me is I ended up losing 45 pounds. I've kept it off. Um, you guys have all seen my abs and you've seen what I look like. And it's all – I still eat plant-based. I just eat more smarter and I eat more – I, I take a better scientific approach to it, and I don't think that, you know, I can eat as much as I want because I can't. And um, I really love what Brian wants think, and you guys know I'm such a fangirl. I'm so in love with him and his research, and if I ever meet him, I'll probably be like, ah! Um, but, um, when he says is that our stomachs have like three settings, which is like, I'm hungry, I'm starving, I could, you know, chew on this chair. Or, um, yeah, I'm pretty full, but I could, you know, eat some more. Oh my god. Uh. And it's like, yes, I know what you're talking about. There is no like comfortably satiated. It's like all the food all the time in the mouth. Um, or like, you know, you'll go to dinner and you'll think I couldn't possibly eat any more. Like there's no more room. But then magically the dessert tray comes around and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I can totally get that in. And that's what he's talking about is there is this no comfortably satiated. So for me, I had to have parameters. I had to have a meal plan. I had to have specific portions and I had to make sure that the foods in those meals were going to satiate me and make me feel full. And so if you've been struggling with any of this or even struggling to be plant-based because you don't feel full or you don't feel your best or anything that's happening, it could just be that it's not the right combination or it's not the right thing. And there's, we all want to believe it's super easy and simple, but I feel for most of us it's not, especially because we've heard so much food noise for so long. And I know that I did. And I still, even after all of these years and all of my research, I still will sometimes be like, well, I'm not hungry, but I'm just going to eat this apple because it looks good. You know, and I'll like have to fight those messages like, oh, it's an apple, so it's healthy, you can eat it. I'm like, no, Lindsay, you're not hungry right now. Save that apple for when you're hungry. Like, you just ate a whole bunch of food. Yes, the apple looks delicious. Yes, the apple's super duper healthy, but guess what? It'll still be delicious and super duper healthy in a few hours when you're ready to eat again. Um, but like, I get it. I totally, totally get it. So, um, I see some questions have been coming up, and so I wanted to, that's Scott in the background. Scott, say hi. Thank you for doing our video last night. Might yeah, you're well, not on Instagram, but you're definitely on Facebook. He's coming in. Yes. Um I forgot what I was saying. Oh yes, questions. So let me see. Um, Heidi said that she's experiencing the same thing where it's like, I eat too much lovely food being vegan. I just seem to cut it down. Um, any pointers would be nice. And like I said, one of the things that worked for me was two things was one choosing foods that, um, that aren't so calorie rich. When I mentioned before, like the nuts 
instead of the cantaloupe or the nuts. Mm, my brain's still not working for being sick. Um, so like for me, one of the things, even though um, counting calories is a perfect math, and that's actually an amazing episode in the Shortcut to Slim podcast, and also the weight loss book that you get if you sign up today, my science-based weight loss book, um, it talks a lot about calories and that and the thermal effect of like when you eat and stuff. Anyway, that's super fascinating, but I'll set that aside. So one of the things to do when you need to cut back your portions is one is for me is I would look and see like, okay, a hundred calories of this, you know, these nuts, it's like three of them and that's not going to fill me up and it's not going to do anything for my satisfaction. But like, oh, I could have this really small potato. And by the way, potatoes are the most satiating food in the world. And so an oatmeal is pretty close afterwards. So for me, I would be like, oh, well, I could eat like a couple of nuts, which isn't going to do anything for me. I'm still going to feel hungry and I'm going to also feel visually starved because five almonds is nothing. Or I could have this beautiful bowl of oatmeal or I could have this like little potato. And so um, that's some, one of the first things I did was just being smarter, being smarter with how I do it. And that's how the meal plans are built is we use them to make sure that one, there's really big portions. So you don't feel like you're on a diet. You don't feel you're starved. You're not like getting this tiny little cup of soup. Like that's one thing people say all the time is like, oh my God, Lindsay, the portions are so big. I feel so, this is amazing. Can I really eat all this? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you can. Um, the other thing is, like I said, also picking foods that are satiating. And so for me, I mean, most of us know that like potato chips aren't going to be as satiating as a potato, but um, the whole potato, but even within like plant foods, there's a lot of stuff that isn't satiating. So for my husband, for example, he can't just eat vegetables. He has to eat vegetables and a grain like brown rice or vegetables and a potato. There has to be some kind of a starch going on or he will not feel full. He won't. And, um, and I've found that's true for a lot of people and myself too. Like I can make myself feel full. Like I can't get any more in full with all the vegetables, but like I still have a weird sort of gnawing hunger until I get like a potato or a sweet potato or something carby. Um, it just, it doesn't seem to work for us otherwise. And so that's why, again, like on the meal plans, you'll see that we always have some sort of starch or like a carbohydrate, whether it is a sweet potato or a regular potato or a rice to help give you that sort of satiation. But also because rice is a lot of calories, it's not like just a bowl of rice. It's like a whole bunch of vegetables with a smaller amount of rice. And that's sort of like the trick I found with myself and also the science is that, you know, you want to have these like very voluminous low calorie foods like vegetables, but they need to come with something else that really sort of satiates. And so that's one of the strategies I definitely encourage you if you need to cut down on your portion sizes, if you are eating just too much in general, is one to look at what you're eating, making sure that it is, um, something that's going to satiate you and also like doing the return on your investment. Are you going to get the most out of those calories? Like what's the best way to spend them? Um, I think someone said I developed a bean allergy and can't have any beans and went back to eating meat. Can you do the meal plans without beans? Yes, we actually do. Um, my husband can't have beans at all. He has a medical condition and his doctor said no beans. And so we just leave beans off of a recipe. Sometimes I'll put nuts and seeds in. Um, or sometimes he'll do tofu instead of beans, or sometimes I'll just leave them off and use some more vegetables. Uh, you know, it's really possible. Beans are a beautiful thing to add, and they're, they really provide a lot of great variety, but if you can't have them, it's, it's totally doable. And if you can have lentils, that's always a straight, straight, you know, substitute too. But um, yeah, we don't do beans. If you watch any of the cooking videos that I do, I'm always like, and Scott can't have beans. So... <laughs> <laughs> so there's no beans in this recipe, but just imagine it. Um, I, I love my husband. But yes, the no beans thing was definitely like, what? Um, but it, we, what's really been interesting with the no beans is I feel like it's made me more creative. So it's always fun when you get these little things thrown into the mix that force you to do stuff. Um, I'm going to pop over to Instagram really quick. And it says, um, uh, Star, Star said, this is how I lost weight, portion control. I lost the 40 pounds when I first went vegan and then had trouble three years later, gained weight, and I'm having trouble losing because I like to eat. And, um, yeah, like I said, if, if you are like me and you get in this habit of, like, eating a lot – then it, it becomes all the more harder. Like I would, you know, have a bean burger and then be like, well, I'm still, everyone says eat until you're comfortably satiated and I'm not like stuffed yet. So let me go have another bean burger. And then, oh, I have another bean burger. No, that's not how it works. It doesn't work. I wish it did. Sorry, guys. Sorry to pop the bubble, but there is no magic calories um, that don't count ever, except I guess maybe water because it doesn't really have any. 
Um, oh, so someone said, I don't know how they people say oatmeal is satiating. I eat a bowl and an hour later I'm hungry. That's actually me too. And I always thought that I was like a freak. Like why does everyone think oatmeal is a brick in their stomach and, and then it's not um, – for me, like I would eat oatmeal and I tried it all. Like I knew instant oatmeal was super processed and kind of a lot of those packets also have sugar. So I knew that was like, no, but even with like rolled oatmeal that I made myself at home, I would still be hungry an hour later. And I was like, why is this not working? Um, and I tried steel cut oatmeal and it wasn't a whole lot better. But what I found for me, like oatmeal hits my husband like a rock. He eats like a bowl of hot oatmeal with some blueberries or banana or whatever he wants. And he's like good until lunch. Um, for me, I only seem to ever find oatmeal satiating if I do um, the detox overnight oats, which is in um, the detox plan, which comes with annual membership if you sign up today. It's basically like a Berkshire muesli, but a vegan version that I do. And that particular overnight oat recipe, which is really great for digestion, it really helps. In fact, when I was finally feeling like I could eat food today, that's what I wanted. Like after all that throwing up, that was the only thing. I was like, that sounds good. That's the only thing that sounds like a good idea. Um, that's the only one that really sticks with me and it sticks with me for a few hours. But still, me, if I want something that's going to stick with me all day, I find potatoes are just the most satiating. But if, if oatmeal doesn't fill you up, you're definitely not alone. It seems to be like 25% of people don't find oatmeal very satiating. I'm one of them. My husband's not. From our members, most people find oatmeal to be super duper satiating, but then there's the people like me who don't. And I'm like, oh, thank you for sharing that. I thought I was a freak at all alone. Um, let me see what else. Yeah, the white. Oh, someone said they like the Happy River Light Lean Cookbook. Yay. I always forget about them. I haven't written books in so long, but I still use my books sometimes, but mostly because we just do the meal plans. I never I never get them out except at the holidays, and it's sad because they're mine, but I don't know. I like all my new work, I guess, a little bit more because now I know it's all going to leave me feeling my best. Um, oh, someone said that they were a raw vegan, and they say you could eat as much as you want, and so they fell into that trap of overeating. Um, and yeah, I could see that happening there too. The interesting thing, I think it's season one, episode one or two, I talk about raw foods and how they, um, how there were all these survivors who couldn't ever get satiated on raw food. So if you're curious about that, that's a really good episode to listen to. Uh, let's see what else. I think I got all the questions. Oh, ha, ha, some other people are joining in saying that they had the same issue with oatmeal. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why it is. But for me, like I said, if I do the overnight oats, that seems to work. But it's not just overnight oats. I other, there's other stuff in the detox version. So maybe it's the combination. I don't know. But for breakfast, I'm like, most days I like a sweet potato. But sometimes I also like the oats, especially in the summer when it's really hot out because they're nice and cool. And they're really easy to make in my hotel room. So I'll do those too. So, um, Will you write a new cookbook with your meal plan? No, I'm done writing books. I'll only do meal plans from here on out. Um, so if you want the recipes, you definitely have to do the meal plans. Um, do you use an Instapot? I don't. I have a pressure cooker. I have a Cuisinart. I bought an Instapot, hated it, and returned it. I know a lot of people love theirs, but I like my Cuisinart pressure cooker. I had a Cuisinart, gave it to my sister, got an Instapot because I thought it was like going to be like the Cadillac, and then um, I hated it, and I sold it and got a uh, Cuisinart again. <laughs> um, but that's just me. I know a lot of people love theirs, but it just it didn't work for me. It was not intuitive enough in terms of like functionality. And I, I, um, I don't like that when I bought them, I don't know if this has changed when I got it, the Instapot, like the default was like, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. And I had to like knock it down to like one minute. There's nothing that I cook in my pressure cooker. That's more than like one to eight minutes. And so with the Cuisinart, it counts up, it starts at one. So I'd be like one start or like one plus a few more to eight and then start. Um, but with the instant pot, I always had to count down and it just drove me crazy to be like, mm, every time I used it, which is such a weird first world thing to complain about, but it just didn't work for me. Like I was just like, no, nope, nope. And I couldn't, and all the other like bells and whistles just stressed me out. So I like my Cuisinart cause it only has four buttons and it's very, um, minimalist, but I know a lot of people love the instant pot. So if you love yours, that's cool. But for me, I had to use the Cuisinart, but I don't really cook in it. And this is one of those things that I feel like. People don't get maybe with it, is, with it is it's sort of like, um, for me, it's like a helper. It does things for me in the background. Like it will cook 
my potatoes in the background or it will cook. Uh, well, when I used to eat beans, it used to make my beans for me, but it always did sort of like ingredients. It wasn't like, um, necessarily a tool. Like I made meals in it. Now with it being winter, I do put in some soups and stews and you'll find on the meal plans, especially from December's meal plans, that there were a lot of pressure cooker recipes for things like soups and chilies. But, um, for the most part, I just use it to make like my corn on the cob or my artichokes or, you know, it's always kind of like the side vegetables getting cooked in there, the green beans. Um, I made a lot of cranberry sauce this Christmas in it and Thanksgiving, but I don't use it to really cook. It's more of like a side thing. But what I would say is not everyone's primed for a pressure cooker. And I actually see this in our member community a lot. It's tons of people run out and buy them and then they stay in their box. If you're not already batch cooking a lot of stuff, like if you're not already making beans yourself, rice yourself, or you're not doing a lot of steaming um, with your vegetables, it's probably not the smart investment for you right now, maybe later. There's actually on um, happyherbivore.com, there's a but a blog post where I rate all of these different pressure cookers that I tried and um, they're at the very bottom of the post. There's like a answer these questions. If you say yes to these questions, then a pressure cooker is a good investment for you. And if not, then it's not. And so um, before you spend over a hundred dollars, I would definitely read that post and just see sort of if it's right for you. Like I bought my parents one and they never use it like at all. Like the only time it gets used is when I visit them and I'm like pulling it out to make something. And my mom's like, Oh, I didn't realize it was so easy to make green beans. It's not everyone's prime. Do my parents cook every single day? Every day they cook. But, you know, everyone's got their routines and sort of like their habits. For me, I can't imagine not having it. I take it with me everywhere. When we travel, it's how I eat in hotel rooms because I'm like, oh, I can microwave a potato. I can pressure cook a squash. Hmm, done. Um... Oh, someone said on Instagram that they add protein powder and blueberries to their oatmeal to fill it up. I, I'm totally not one of those protein powder people. I'm kind of against it, sorry. Um, but if that could be something someone could try if they wanted. But I'm really, um, because of all the different science I've read, I'm not for isolated stuff. Um, so Thomas was saying that, yeah, he also does this for um, for the pressure cooker, that it's basically for like, um, rice or beans or stuff like that. It's like a really good tool if you want to like kind of get to basics and do stuff. Like mine makes an amazing broth, which is great. And one of the things I really like about my Cuisinart is I can use it and not have to use my stove. And in the summer, that's really helpful. Like when I need to make something like a broth, I can just put it in there and do it on either like a slow cook or just a regular function. And then I don't have to, because I have gas and air conditioning is like a, not such a common thing in Los Angeles. And so it's nice to have that um, in the summer too. So it kind of comes and handy there too but yeah I would say it's more for like some background assisting it's not like this wonder thing for most people um oh Christy said she loves the meal plans yay um let me see uh Diana said I use mine to get stuff ready for the freezer batching it never full meal basically my beans lentils etc yeah that's a good point too and that's something I do is like um my sister is allergic to pepper so there's very little that we can buy in terms of store-bought like marinara sauce or enchilada sauce any of that stuff is just not going to be possible or safe for my sister because she's allergic to peppers and they usually put that in those things and then they don't say it so when she's visiting I'll make like huge like I'll make a big, 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 big amount of like marinara sauce or enchilada sauce in my pressure cooker and then I'll put it in my freezer so that when my sister is over for dinner, like she has her like safe portion. Um, so that's something that we do a lot too. And the same with my um, my mom has some allergies and I have some allergies as you guys know too. Mine's broccoli. So so broth is not always a safe thing for me to buy. So um Sometimes I'll make like, I save all my veggie scraps for the week and then I'll make like a big thing of it in my pressure cooker and then I'll freeze it so that I have it. But that's just because I can't buy it. You know me, I love shortcuts. I love to buy everything that I can. So, um, anyway, it's good for batching stuff. Um, oh, Justin said that they use their pressure cooker or to cook in the summer. Yeah, mine has a saute setting, which basically is like, um, it basically acts as like a stovetop, you know, the saute. It's like almost the same as a stovetop. And that actually was really helpful for us when we were camping and RVing around is I basically just made it as my little portable stove. I mean, I'm sure the people thought I was weird that I was using the communal outlet in the bathroom to do that, but, you know, whatever. Um... 
Virginia was asking how much meal plan membership is. So if you sign up today for a yearly meal plan membership, it's $179, which is 22% off. And you'll also get the weight loss bundle, which I think all together is worth like $350. So if nothing else, definitely do it for the lecture on mindset science on how to change your brain for success. I love that lecture. It's so fun. I'm going to do it live next week, and then you'll have the replay. And um, the new weight loss book that I just wrote that has all of the information in it is is a lot of fun, which I think someone on Instagram was asking for my research, and so it's in there. But um, you can also find a lot of the research on my Shortcut to Slim podcast, too. Or I think I actually linked to all the protein studies in the Happy Hoover Guide to Plant-Based Living. There's a lot. There's tons of them. Um, someone was asking about maple syrup. Do your recipes have sugar? So occasionally we will use maple syrup, but you could use date syrup or just leave it out. It's not, um, it's not a requirement. A lot of our members don't use the, the sweetener. It's, it's almost always optional. And mostly we put it in there because of kids. Is we have a ton of families that use the meal plan, lots of moms, lots of kids. And so with kids, which is actually, this is a really interesting science thing. So, Children actually have like a palate for higher sweetness than humans. So there was this really cool study that they did and um, it was like a pudding and they made the pudding like various levels of sweetness. And one of the puddings was like really sweet to the point where like adults couldn't even t- like they couldn't. It was no like e- like all the adults were like just too much. But that was the one that all the kids liked. And so they were like, this is really Curious. So the researchers that were doing that study ended up, you know, going down a rabbit hole and finding that kids just need, they just need, like, their mouth, like, wants things to be sweeter. And I guess the theory behind it is, is because, like, that means it's a higher calorie concentration, which is what a growing body would need. So it's evolutionary, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, because of that, we do often say, you know, you could add a little of maple or a little agave to this. And it's mostly for our people who are either one transitioning from a standard American diet or two who have kids because sometimes we find like a little bit of maple syrup really makes the the dish go a little bit better with kids but like I said it's totally totally your choice um Robin asked how long this is special for a few more hours I think it's ending in like three hours I'm not sure there's a timer on the website but it's ending today and um we will have another discount sale in like March but the bundle won't be available so I would definitely if you want to lose weight or learn about it or um work with me directly because I coach in the group all year long um today would be the day to do it so do that um how do you make plans with an omnivore family so when I'm with my omnivore family my extended family the way we do it is I make the meal plan and then I usually get like a rotisserie chicken and they just add chicken to their portion or um sometimes they will like grill fish or um I'll just put uh, shredded cheese out and they'll like put that on their portion but that's basically what I do and that's what a lot of our members do is that they cook the meal and then their omnivore family um grills some meat or whatever and then uses the the meal plan meal is sort of like either a side dish or just like something to go with the chicken or the beef or whatever that they're doing. So um, it, it's actually surprised me how well it works. Like I was with Scott. Um, he had a reunion and we were staying in a beach house with like six other couples. None of them were vegan. And I was like, I have no idea how this is going to work. Um, but so what I did was, is I just cooked like quadruple any of the family recipes. And then the, the guys just grilled meat every night. And then they, we basically had the food I made, which is what Scott and I ate for our meals. And actually some of the wives were like, Oh, I'm really excited to eat vegetarian. Um, and so they ate that. And then the, the dudes just like added some meat to the side and, um, it works really well. It actually, even those people were like, I feel really good this week. Like it's definitely, this is really great. I should do this at home. And I'm like, you should. <laughs> so that works really well. Um, oh, Anne's asked what's included in the bundle. So the bundle that comes, uh, and this is a, the bundle is free if you sign up for membership today. Otherwise you have to buy it uh, yourself regularly. But inside the bundle is the 2018 detox plan, which is great if you want to like sort of just jumpstart into the new year and like eat like this is the most healthiest, cleanest, most nutrient stuff. Um, there's the best of 2017 cookbook, which every year our members vote on their favorite recipes from the whole year. So inside the best of 2017 cookbook is, uh, the 25 most favorite, most beloved recipes that appeared on the meal plans the whole year. They're just the fan favorites. So it's really nice. It's a good thing, especially if you're new to this. Those are like the tried and true. Everyone loves them recipes. Um, you also get my, my new weight loss book, which is, uh, all the science from Shortcut to Slim, plus some new science about like how it works. So you can sort of work smarter, not harder, kind of like what I was talking about earlier with like the cost of digestion. Um, there is the my 45-minute lecture on mindset science, which is really, it's just so fascinating. And it really changed 
it was the secret for me for getting off the last 15 pounds of like how you think, how you talk to yourself and where, the way you see things, um, which is like very vague, but that was really exciting. Um, you get one year of support, you get access to the Facebook group with me. So you're there to ask questions and sort of coach you along. And there's probably another benefit in that bonus that I'm not remembering. Oh, the weight tracker app. What else is in there? It'll be on the website if you go to getmealplans.com and it'll say what's all in the bundle. And you get all that just for signing up today. Um, like I said, membership's 22% off for the next few hours. So definitely, if you're thinking about it, go. And also, if um, you don't like it, you have 30 days to get a full refund. So there's really no risk to try. Someone says, does your meal plan include soy? Meal plans are soy free. Um, whenever we do tofu, we also offer um, a non-tofu option like chickpeas or something. So it's pretty rare, but um, the meal plans are soy-free because um, we're also soy-free because of my mom. Let's see. Um, Tammy says, I'm reluctant to get a meal plan because my husband has allergies to citrus and I find a lot of plans use citrus. We don't really use citrus on the meal plans. Um, I guess there's a little lemon juice every now and then, but I don't know why you couldn't just use vinegar instead. Because that's usually what I do. Whenever I use lemon juice, it usually says like lemon or vinegar. So yeah. I mean, occasionally there will be something with like oranges, but you could just use a different fruit. Yeah. I guess I never realized that. We don't do a lot of citrus. Um, let's see. Do you have many gluten-free options? Always gluten-free. The meal plans are always gluten-free friendly. They're gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, vegan. Um, we also have a nut-free option. We have a flour-free option for all those people who don't use flour. Um, so all the recipes, it's the most, it's so allergy-friendly because I have a lot of allergies and I understand how frustrating it is. And then my husband has limitations and my sister and my mom and my dad. Like I live in this world of like chronic allergies and so we make the meal plan recipes really adaptable and really friendly to everybody. Um, and I, I find it just works better that way because most of it's just, you know, whole simple foods. I don't use weird stuff. I love to tell this story that when I first went vegan and I went to the Barnes and Noble and I bought a cookbook and I found a recipe and it called for pomegranate molasses. Didn't even know what that was. I had to like Google it. And I went to seven, I'm not exaggerating, seven different stores to find this thing. Finally found it. And then I made the recipe, which was fine, but it wasn't the kind of recipe I would make every day because it took like, I don't know, two hours and it wasn't just because I was slow. And then I flipped through the cookbook and no other recipe used pomegranate molasses. And like I actually moved across the country twice and didn't take a lot with me on those moves, but took that pomegranate molasses because the bottle was like $13 and I was like, damn it. And then I think it finally expired at some point. But ever since that happened, I'm like, I will never do that, never again. And so everything's normal. I use just normal ingredients like, you know, canned beans, frozen broccoli, ketchup. Yep, I use ketchup in the recipes. Like, it's real world cooking, guys. This isn't fancy and gourmet. It's just simple ingredients, simple stuff, five to ten minutes because I just don't have time for gourmet. Not in my world. Not in my world. Um, I read, uh, I know you guys have been, some of you have been following me. I read just under 250 books last year, um, which it was funny. I was I had tweeted about it, and someone's like, do you work? And I'm like, 60 hours a week. <laughs> um, and I'm like, oh, this is why. Because, like, I will often listen to my books while I'm cooking. But even still, it's like I couldn't do that. I couldn't have read all those awesome books if I did if I was slaving away every night cooking. And you guys see my videos. It's really quick and easy. Um, it's fun. I love cooking with you guys. But then I'm also like, I could have been reading. Maybe I would have gotten to 250 if I didn't do those videos. Um, someone asked for my brand of pressure cooker. It is the Cuisin Art. Um... My biggest challenge with plant-based eating is tomatoes and bananas. I have a severe allergy to both. Well, on the meal plans, we definitely don't use bananas very much. It's usually only in, like, oatmeal recipes, and so you can always leave that off. With tomatoes, we do use them, but you can um, usually take them off. One thing that I have to say, and this is how amazing our community is, is even within our community, there's smaller communities. And we actually have a tomato-free, like, group within our group. There's a whole bunch of people that are tomato-free. And there's all these really cool substitutes now, like no tomato sauce and no tomato ketchup um, that you can use instead. Whenever I have to cook without tomatoes, which is actually um, one of my friends is deathly allergic to them, so I feel you. And so whenever she's coming over, I basically use red peppers and red pepper sauce. And um, there's a red pepper sauce recipe on happyherbivore.com that you can use. And it works great every single time. I've never had a problem using that instead of um, tomatoes or ketchup. So it works really, really well. And like I said, um, one of the things I love about this community is how much everybody helps each other. Like you post a question and like 20 answers come in immediately of people sharing their experience or like what they've learned or tried. 
Um, I love the parents. The parents are so helpful with each other. My kid ate this. My kid ate this. If I did this, my kid ate the blah. Oh my God. It's so amazing to see how people help each other just like survive every day. Um, but yeah, so the tomato community is really cool. And I've actually found a lot of really great tips from them. And so now uh, I feel like I am prepared to feed my friend that is allergic to tomatoes. There's some acid in it that she's just super duper allergic to. Um, but yeah, she can't have anything that is even kind of tomato-y. So anyway, that's an option for you. Um, let me see. Um, Kelly said, why would someone need to be soy-free? Allergies. Um, my mom's just allergic. Like my sister, she gets like like little bumps on her skin, which isn't – it's more vanity than anything. But like I get it. I wouldn't want to have bumps on my skin either. Like I'm allergic to broccoli, but I don't make everyone else avoid broccoli. Don't worry. There's broccoli on the meal plans. But um, – like, for me, my neck, my throat starts to close off, so that's, like, a really big allergy I don't want to mess with, but um, I get it. Like, I have a friend who, when they eat quinoa, they get itchy, like, really, really itchy. Like, their whole body gets itchy. So, I mean, different people react differently to things, but um, yes. Oh, Kira asked if the meal plans are oil-free. Yes, always. We never use oil ever. Just completely oil-free. Um, that's sort of been my thing since I started Happy Herbivore before 10 years ago was, like, one of the reasons I started it was because I couldn't find any cookbooks or blogs or anything with, like, oil-free plant-based cooking, and so that's that's sort of like my thing. I don't even have oil. Like I needed oil recently. I, it was basically, I dropped a bottle, like the brush of mascara, um, on the carpet and I, it was waterproof mascara. And I was like, how am I going to get this out? And all the internets told me to use like coconut oil or something to get it out. And I was like, I don't even have any oil in my house to do this. But I found out that my coconut butter lotion worked just as good. So there's a little tip for everybody. If you ever have, like, mascara issues, like, that worked really well. Um, no questions here. Just wanted to say what an amazing inspiration you are. Aww. Let's see. Um... Terry asked about Canadian members. Do you find any ingredients difficult to find? This is also another amazing part of our community is we have a sub-thread for people who live in Australia and also for Canadians, and they're always sharing, like, where they find stuff and where they get it. But overall, I'd say the Canadians don't really have a problem. Assuming they're in a larger town, this is true of America, too. The bigger the town you are in, the easier it is. I um, went to Canada last year uh, for a conference, and I ended up going to, like, four of the grocery stores just to see what they had, and I found everything there and actually more options than even some of my supermarkets in LA but I think this again is sort of like the benefit to only using like normal ingredients like there isn't weird stuff on the meal plans it's just you know vegetables if you guys saw the video last night when Scott made the soup it was like carrots and ginger and oats <laughs> like, and these things are everywhere um so that's one of the things that's sort of going on there um let's see your recipes use nutritional yeast. What is that? It's sort of like a spice. Um, they sell it at Trader Joe's, and um, every supermarket I've been to now has Trader has nutritional yeast. I, I don't know how to describe it except it tastes cheesy, and it's kind of like a spice, but it's not. But um, you just use it. And I would say we use it a lot, only whenever I want to, like, have a cheesy recipe. Um, but, yeah, Trader Joe's has it now, as do, like, Kroger, and, of course, anything like a health food store is going to have it, and so that's cool. Um... Shay asked, is the subgroup in your regular community or the Facebook group? Oh, so all, like, our community groups are within the forums on uh, getmealplans.com. How long did it take you to figure out your body's likes and dislikes to certain foods? I don't know. That's a good question. I guess... It's still like an evolution, I guess. I still like learn more about myself, but I also think that as you clean up your body and you start eating better, more things become revealed to you. So for me, um, broccoli was very obvious, like throat closing off. It's a pretty good sign. Um, but, and then like with the oatmeal, like I would eat it and I would be hungry. And then after a couple of times that that happens, I'm kind of like, okay, maybe I should try a different breakfast. Um, and so it's not that it took a long time as much as it was just like each little thing was different. So for me, for example, I've learned that I can't eat super late at night because I won't sleep. And that was many nights of me not sleeping and starting to kind of journal like, what am I doing every day? 
And then I realized, oh, if I eat dinner really late at like 7.30 or 8 p.m., like I'm just not going to sleep well. So for me, I had to have dinner like a grandma at 6 p.m., but you know what? Sleep's worth it. So I think it's just being kind of like mindful and thinking and paying attention, but it sometimes takes a while to get there. Like I would not have realized this in the first few years. It wasn't until like I had really sort of like cleaned up my diet and was eating really healthy consistently that I could kind of fine tweak it. And that was sort of the same with my husband. We just learned, I don't know within the last year that chili powder really upsets his stomach and we couldn't pinpoint it. We knew when he ate certain meals, it got, he didn't feel good. And so every time he didn't feel good, we wrote down the meals we ate and we were able to figure out like all those meals had chili powder. And that probably took, I don't know, like six months because I don't use it every day. Like I didn't use chili powder every day, but after keeping like a journal, like, Oh, Scott got, you know, acid reflux or Scott got this. It was like, oh, okay, let's now go back and see where the common denominator is. And then we figured it out. So there's a lot of really amazing apps out there. Um, for food allergies and that you can actually just like log. I mean, it takes incredible dedication because you have to log everything you're eating, how you feel, like your bowel movements. But if you're willing to do that by like a month or two, you'll have a really good feel of like what bothers you and what doesn't. And that was actually one way that I learned that um, – like my body did not do well with oil because I, I realized every time I ate it, like if I was like out at a restaurant or whatever, like I had really bad GI experiences later. So um, that's something something to consider, play with. Um, Justin said batch cooking is the bomb and the shortcuts on the meal plans are helpful. Yes, I miss batch cooking. I'm hoping this year when my classes are different that I'll get to do that again. Um, Mimi says, I'm in Quebec, Canada. No problems finding any ingredients. Thank you for sharing. Um, Bab said, what's your refund, refund policy? You have 30 days risk-free to try it out. You have the whole month. If at the end of 30 days you're like, this just isn't working for me. I don't like it. Cool. No problem. Just email us and you'll get a full refund. And you'll even get to keep the meal plans that you had. Um... I noticed a lot of starches in the sample plan. Is that typical? Um, yes and no. So there's pretty much going to always be like a potato or grain with every meal because that's how you feel satiated. And it's also really critical if you want to lose weight. So there is always going to be starch. If you're looking for a low carb meal plan, this is not, this is not for you. Um, but, uh, I mean, we do have a few people who tweak it to be low carb and like hats off to them. But like this, this meal plan is definitely going to have like grains in it, like whole grains, like brown rice or quinoa, which is technically a pseudo cereal. It's not a grain. Um, or like, you know, a pasta every now and then. So there's definitely going to be some of that, but most of it, even when we do include it, it's vegetable heavy. So it's more vegetables than grain. Um, I just signed up. Yay. Welcome, Anne. I'm excited to make 2018 healthy and happy year. Um, oh, and Winco Foods has nutritional yeast for those who have that shopping option. Um, Virginia said that she just found out champagne gives her a really bad headache. I feel you there. So hard, so hard on that. Um, and Sharon said, um, if there's, oh, this is a really great tip. Sharon says that if there's a meal on the plan that I don't like, I just substitute it with a meal from the previous week that I liked a whole lot. Yep, that's something you could do. That's also where the best of 2017 cook, cookbook comes in. Like I said, if you join today, you'll get the best of 2017 cookbook, which is all of the like top 25 most famous recipes of 2017. Um, they're like the most beloved, most, you know, worshipped. Everyone voted on them. They're all five-star rated. And so if you're new, it's a good place to start. But also, if there is something on the meal plan this week that, you know, it's just not jiving with you, it's just not striking your fancy, you're like, yeah, I just don't really feel like, you know, Philly cheesesteak, mushroom, whatever. Um, you can just pick something out of the best of as your substitute meal in. And even we do that sometimes because like, even though I like a recipe, I'm just like, ah, uh, you know, I'm just really not in the mood for risotto this week. You know, I'm just like not feeling that. So I'll be like, Oh, you know, I love that carrot soup. So this gives me a perfect opportunity to remake it. Um, and so like, I'll do things like that. Or, um, you know, sometimes we'll have someone visiting and I'm like, Oh yeah, Scott's friend that's coming over for dinner. There's just no way they're going to eat Indian food. Like they're just going to look at me and be like, what is this? So I'll be like, okay, so we're going to make something a little bit more conventional. Um, so things like that. So anyway, do you agree with Dr. Greger's plant-based advice? I thought about buying his book. I, hard question to answer. Um, I think a lot of the stuff that he says is really great. Um, and Gregor's an amazing person as I, as a human, I think he's amazing. And I think that 
his website's amazing. And I think the research that he does is amazing. And it's funny, we often quote the same studies. Um, but I think he can be a little too reductionist. Like, um, I think, uh, one of our members, Natasha has this great, um, thing that she's always telling new members is like to like not get lost in the minors, um, or the, you know, the forest for the trees, like, and I think Gregor does. Like, I think that sometimes he just gets a little too reductionist. Like, he focuses on two little things, and it's like, we're all going to live if we don't eat a Brazilian nut a day. <laughs> like, in my world, with everything I have going on, and I have so much to worry about on any given day, like, I do not need more stress and more complication in my life. Um, I can't be like, did I have enough this? Did I have enough that? Like, if I'm eating plant-based, and it's really healthy, and I do it you know, every day, or I'm like, you know, I'm very, I'm progress, not perfection. He's perfection. I guess that's probably the simula simulation. Um, that said, if you have a specific health illness, like a very specific health illness, like heart disease or cancer, his book's very helpful. It's extremely helpful for each of those individual diseases because it kind of lays out the disease and how nutrition can help with it. But for like the average Joe who's just trying to eat healthier and really educate themselves on science, I think his website's probably the best course of action for you there. Um, let me see. Oh, yay, Tammy just signed up. Yay, welcome. Um, uh, Charlie said, can you buy the cookbook without signing up? No, they're exclusive to the meal plans with membership. That's one of the awesome parts of membership is not only do you get a meal plan every week, but you get access to all of these cookbooks, like the best of 2017 cookbook. And I have a big breakfast cookbook that's free to all members. And, um, in the bundle today is the detox plan and, um, and then we also put out things like there's a, a the holiday time. We put out a holiday cookbook to help you have things to take to parties. Like there's a potluck book. And um, in the fall season, there's a pumpkin book with a, like a lot of little extra bonus recipes for pumpkins. And these things just come like as a perk, a gift for me to you for being a member. And so um, that's definitely one of the perks. And so one of the things I tell people is like with the meal plans, it's not just that you're getting a meal plan every week with more recipes and simple healthy recipes, but you also get all these like really exclusive cookbooks. And it's just, it's so fun. It's, it's, and the community is amazing. Like that's my favorite part of the whole thing is it's not even just writing the recipes for you guys. It's getting to work with you and watch people um, we just did these two interviews with two of our long-term customers that, um, Gary and Monique, who both lost over hundred pounds. And it was just like, I cried through the whole interviews because I was so touched and moved to hear about their lives and how they changed, especially Gary. Gary had MS and I mean, he still does, but, um, he had all these lesions in his last MRI. They're gone. Like, they're not on his spinal cord anymore. And I'm just like, plants are so magic. And that's what he said. He's like, plants are magic. And I'm like, this is amazing. Like I'm, so, I'm choking up because I'm like so happy for him and his family. And to think that like all he had to do is change how he ate. Um, let me see. Um, what is the average prepping time? So if you do all of the batch cooking on the weekend, like you do all of your cooking on the weekend, um, for me, it takes me one to three hours. Um, if you're not super fast or you haven't been cooking for a lot of years, it might take you three, two, three, four the first couple of times you do it, but you'll eventually get your groove. So if you do all your cooking on the weekend, probably two to three hours. Um, and then if it's at night, like if you're doing it at night, like you're just making one recipe at a time after work, it's anywhere from five to 25 minutes. And that really depends. Like in the summer months, um, all of our food's really fresh and they're like, like kind of like different versions of salads. And so that's like five minutes because you're not even really cooking. It's, cause it's summer. It's hot. No one wants to cook. It's all fresh food. And then in the winter with things like soups, you know, they have to simmer for like 10 minutes. And so that makes it a little bit longer. Or there maybe is like a casserole you bake or like a pasta dish. There's just no way to make pasta cook less than 10 minutes. But um, I would say on average, I spend anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. And if I am a superstar and I remember to like set all my stuff out in the morning before I go to work, then it's even faster when I come home. But I don't always remember to do that. Um, Robin said, would Dr. Furman be in that group? Very informative, but not sure about all the recs. Furman is, yeah, I mean, I could see him being a little reductionist. We disagree on mushrooms, and so I'll just leave it at that. Um, um, Anita said, well, I won't read what she wrote, but I would love to help you, Anita, so I hope you sign up. Um, have you seen people reverse type 2 diabetes on your plan? Great question. Yes, lots of them. Um, 
we have I, one off the top of my head, Candy came to my mind. She, I want to say she did it within a month, but that's definitely something that we see a lot is the reversal of type two diabetes. Um, especially if it came on, you know, later in life. Now, if it's type one, no, but type two, yes, we've definitely seen it. Um, sometimes it's really fast. Sometimes it's within weeks. Sometimes it's within months, but it's definitely something I've seen. If you have type two diabetes and you're thinking about using a plant based diet to reverse it, I cannot recommend Dr. Neil Bernard's book. Prevent and Reverse Diabetes Enough. It's a great book. It's it's normal speak. Like a lot of the books, sometimes I feel get a little too science class, but his is normal. And if you don't want to read a book, he has a video on YouTube. And um, it basically is the whole book in a uh, YouTube form. And it's great. I, I really can't recommend it enough. Um, I, there's no way for me to reply back to give you the video link. But so there's, but there's that. Uh, let me see. Um, it's so hard to read these things. Oh, so Sharon, this is a great tip. Thanks for sharing that, Sharon. Sharon said that she often will prep her veggies before. So, like, if her meal that she's going to be making for dinner that night, you know, requires, like, an onion to be chopped, she just chops it ahead. Or you could be a cheater and buy pre-chopped onion at the store. I do that sometimes. And so when she comes home from work, it's just, like, there, and she can go even a little bit faster. You guys, if you watch my videos on Facebook, you know that I um. I cheat and use my mini food processor, <laughs> but it's like five seconds. It's so much faster. So that's it. Um, oh, Lisa said, hi, Lindsay. I love the meal plans. I have lost almost, I can't read it. What does it say? Oh, wow. Almost 30 pounds. That's amazing. Oh my God. I'm, so, I'm going to cry again, you guys. And she said her diabetes is almost back to the normal range. So there you have it right from Lisa. Oh, I don't think I can leave that on a better note. I don't think I can. So I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to go lay down because I'm a little tired now. Um, um, Rachel, is there a guide to your plan for how much to do if you do a lot of exercising? There's, um, I would read the weight loss book about exercising and then make some decisions. And if you still don't know what you need to do, you can just reach out to support and I'll be happy to give you some specific guidelines there. I do have a few professional athletes, including, um, one of the, there was a gentleman, he was the first guy to, first male vegan to, uh, hike Mount Everest. And his name is Kuntal. He's very inspirational. He uses the meal plans or, and he did training. So I work with a lot of, um, legit, like hardcore athletes and they use the plans. Um, it's a little different, but it's possible. But like I said, I would definitely check out the weight loss book first, um, on the science behind exercising before you make any decisions. Um, and Terry asked, are the bundles ebooks or download either? You can, you can download them, print them, do whatever you like with them. So, um, finally, last question. Um, who are your favorite authors and most recommended books? I actually don't recommend reading, uh, even though I read 200, almost 250 books last year, I don't actually recommend reading books to people anymore because I find that people, um, read and continue to educate instead of do. And I'm one of those people, like, I would just, like, spend all this energy and all this time, like, planning and learning more and doing more and um, not actually getting around. It was, like, I it made me feel like I was making progress without actually doing something. And um, I ended up in the next season of Shortcut to Slim, I'm actually going through a lot of science about this. But there's a lot of people um, and a lot of science now that says that we do this as humans, is that we will take a lot of time trying to educate and learn and do um before doing, but then it's, it's so that we get that little hit that we've done something so we can feel good. Um, but we're not actually doing it. So, um, I have stopped recommending things for that because most of us are educated enough and intuitively we all know what we need to do to live healthier. But just in case you need a reminder, eat more vegetables, move your body a little bit more, doing things you like, which could include shopping because that's exercising, um, walking your dog, cleaning your house. That's all exercising. Adopt a positive outlook on life. And join a community, like be part of a community, whether it's a church group or male mentors community or some other group on Facebook. That's it. That's all you got to do. And you will live healthier and have more longevity and your numbers will improve. And um, of course, if you can change a little bit of your mindset, that will be that too. So with that, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. A few more hours left. Get your 22% off in the amazing bundle. Work with me all year long. And um, I'll see you on Facebook soon.